Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Good to see you all again, hope you're all keeping well. Well, I'm back in the office today and just thought I'd do a bit of an update on my kit list really. I've got an array of bits of kit here that I've uh, purchased over the last week or two and I thought I may as well do an update because uh, with doing landscapes and bits and bobs and a bit less obviously no sport, I needed some more kit. Um, so I've made a few big purchases and for any of you eagle-eyed photographers out there that saw my last video when I was out in the New Forest on Friday, I've got a new backpack. So I'll show you that in a minute. But the first major item that I've bought, which has been delivered just today, not yet, I haven't even got it out of the box yet, 5D Mark IV. I've wanted one for ages. Obviously, not really aimed at sport. Obviously, it's more for the landscapes and woodlands. Um, Massive 30 megapixel sensor, which is going to be ideal for obviously landscapes, woodlands, but also for the sports scene. Probably going to mount it behind the uh, the goal on the remote. It's only seven frames per second, so it's about the same speed as what my 7D Mark II was that I've been using for my remote cam. But with this, if there's any action in the five yard area or going back to the 18 yard area, I'll be able to pull that right in on that 30 megapixel sensor. So it's really for landscapes, obviously for the massive sensor size, but I can also make use of it as and when I get back to sport, um, either by my feet if I'd carry on using the 7D, but I'm probably gonna use the 5D Mark IV behind the goal so that I can really pull in them frames if I need to and keep the quality there. Because the 7D Mark II was good, um, obviously the ISOs will be better on that as well, I would have thought, on, on a par with the 1DX. So uh, it shouldn't be as noisy for night games or in low light conditions. And as soon as you start pulling any sort of frame in on the 7D, you lose lots of quality. Um, so yeah, that's that's the first major bit of kit is the 5D Mark IV. Can't wait. I'm hopefully going to go out into the forest again tomorrow. So I'll uh, get that out in anger and, and hopefully make some good use of it. That's the plan anyway. Right, so that's the 5D Mark IV which came today. Next, I'm sure some of you would have noticed this from the last video. New backpack. It's the Temba Axis. It's a 32 litre. Temba Axis Tactical, it is. Fairly new on the market. 32 litre, it's the biggest they do. It's a lovely size, as you can see. Not too deep, and it's, it's nice and light. And the th there's two... There's two reasons, there's actually three reasons that attracted me to get in this backpack. A is the top compartment. Oh, so I've just got the waterproof cover in there for now, but you can fit a lens in there, or you can fit, you, I'll be able to fit the 5D, because it's slightly smaller than a 1DX. I'll be able to fit the 5D and the lens straight in the top there. So, and that is brilliant. Just, you can pop the bag down, get it straight out the top which is great. So that, that was one feature that really attracted me. The second feature is the side entrance at the bottom. So, again, same sort of thing. Take the chamois out. <laughs> same sort of thing as you can see in there. Camera, again, 5D will be fitting there lovely. I found that uh, you can see in this footage here, just struggled a bit to get the 1DX out of it with it being such a deep body, but again, a nice, quick entrance, get your body and your lens out and you're away. Again, ideal for landscapes, really. So yeah, that's great, that's on the side. And also, it's designed so that when you've got it on, you can take one strap off, sling it round your shoulder, straight in. But obviously, you'd be putting it down most of the times. But And the other really important thing to me, the other important aspect of this bag to me, it's rear entry. So obviously, with my low pro all weather 2 i had you had to put the bag down whether it was you know if it's on a wet day on a sports event or whether i've been out in the woods or any landscapes and it's damp on the ground you've got i had to put the low pro down on the straps and then come in from the front with this most of the time you might have a, a cover on so you can just rest it down and then you're straight in at the back which is great so you're not getting your, your shoulder straps dirty or anything, so really good, I'm really, really impressed with that. And obviously I've got most of the kit out of it at the moment, but uh, as you can see, 
loads of space in there, loads of space, loads of, uh, you know, massive variety of how you can set up the padding. So, uh, I mean, I could get the 400 in there if I wanted to, easy. But, um, yeah, so that's that. Obviously, you've got your, there's a massive pouch here for your laptop. And then I'll just sit that back up. You've got removable waist straps, which is really good. Again, on the uh, the low pro that I had, couldn't remove them. And I used to end up folding them around the front of the bag and it just got a massive issue. So yeah, you can you can remove these. They're just Velcroed in under there, so you can remove them. These straps are adjustable and there's a, a plastic, uh, I don't know what you call it, <laughs> plastic tool that goes in behind there to split the Velcro and then you can move the straps up and down, which is great in there. And also that's tied on, so you're never gonna lose it. So that just slots in there. Lovely padding, great padding. I say I wore it on Saturday, used it on Saturday. I was a good two, three hours walking around the forest and it was so comfy. This padding's really thick. So uh, yeah, nice handle there. Uh, what we got at the front? At the front, we've got all this webbing. I think they're uh, they're military design timber are so and I know in the in the dark this all it's all reflective all this webbing I don't know if you can see that yeah you can see that there and you can have you can buy more of these straps let's just look at that so straps there they just they can hook into any of these any of this webbing and obviously at the moment I had I had my my new tripod which I'll show you in a minute was strapped in there and then I also because I, I use two tripods when I'm out and about uh, doing my filming. The second tripod sat in there nicely, just in that side pocket. So that was nice. So yeah, really happy with this bag. And it was quite cheap as well, 219 from Park Cameras. I'll put all the links for all this kit that I'm going to show you in the description below anyway. But yeah, really chuffed with that bag. It, uh, it worked really well and I just love, I love that side entry and I can't wait to start using the 5D just in there, it'll fit in there, it'll fit like a glove, it'll be really good. So yeah, new bag, new Temba. Temba, was it Temba Axis 32 litre? So that's that. Right, the new tripod. It's sort of middle of the range tripod. I didn't want to spend hundreds of pounds. This was 119. It's a Niwa, and because the, I've had the uh, Niwa mini tripod that I use for my remote camera. I've shown you that on, on previous videos, on the football videos. Um, I really like the Niwa kit, so I just thought I'd get, I'd get another Niwa. And uh, it's really good. Loads of uh, settings on the legs. You can get it, you, you can actually, you can go right, you know, you can go all sorts. So there's loads of settings on the legs. And with this one, which is handy, not that I'll probably ever use it, because as you guys know, I've got my, Siri monopod, Siru, Siri monopod, that's great. I've talked about that in previous videos, but this one also comes, one of the legs is detachable and it uh, it can also be a monopod. So if ever something happened to my Siri and I lost it or something, I've always got an extra monopod there if ever I need it. But uh, as a rule, this will always stay on as a, as a tripod. It's got the great ball mount on the top, lovely and smooth really nice and it's good for panoramics you can tighten it up so that's really good if you're doing a pano on the landscapes but one extra thing that i like about this is that you could if i get this right you can angle the head so you can pull the head out and then you could have anything on on the desk or anything you know so really like that or if i'm out and about and i want to shoot some flowers or something you know, and I want to come straight down on the angle on a, a slow shutter speed. So yeah, I really like that idea. It's just on a ball fitting at the top and it's tightened up with this wing nut. So I'll just put that back. So that slots in there and that's a great idea. And obviously you've also got your lock here that you can, ooh, if I can unlock that, there we are. So you can extend it as well. Don't like to extend tripods if I can help it because of the wobble. That's just not quite so stable, but uh, it's there in case you ever need it. If you need anything extra than head height. And yeah, it's, um, it's about five foot, three adjustments, all on the quick quick release locks, which I like. Same as the Siri monopod. And uh, yeah, really like that one. It's also got a little hook there if you wanna have a, a kit, a kit uh, basket or anything hanging on if you were gonna be in one place for a long time. So yeah, that's the, the new Niwa tripod. I remember saying in my last kit video how uh, I don't use a tripod much, but now that I've started landscapes and woodland, 
I could I, I needed a second tripod. So I say it's sort of middle of the range, but uh, it'll certainly do for me. Right, what else we got? I mentioned in my last kit video as well. I haven't got any. I don't use filters. Well, now I do. So I've recently got a Hoyer. Um, this is a, a polarizer mainly for if I'm doing streams or anything like that, or if I'm in the woodland, this polarizer will, obviously, it's not always needed in the woodland because you want a bit of reflection and a bit of shine and, you know, to get the highlights off the leaves. But if you want to make, make it a bit flatter and, and just nice lush green and take that sheen off the leaves, if it's a dry day or whatever, you can use the polarizer. But yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, using that. Um, obviously 77 mil, so it will go on my 17 to 40 or on the, the new Tekina lens that I've bought, but I'll show you that in a minute. Um, so I'm looking forward to going and finding some, some streams or um, rock pools on our seafront, anything like that that will take all the glare off. So that's that. I've got a variable ND filter. They're okay, but the majority of ND filters, the variable type, they give you a bit of a cross at certain settings, but that's, that's ideal. Just if I uh, forget my 10-stop ND filter, just screw that on and you can just adjust adjust things a bit so that's that i've bought a coking filter set and that comes with three graduated filters if you can see that yeah you can see that look i used the nd8 i think this is the nd8 i used the nd8 on saturday or friday when i was out uh, photographing that that single beech tree so uh, yeah they're just sheets of glass obviously fitting i'm sure you've all got these anyway i'm, I'm a bit late to the party really but yeah that just slots onto the, the front of the lens, as you saw on Saturday in the video, and then you just slot your glass in. Again, I'm late to the party, I bet everyone's got these, but uh, nice to have some filters. So that's an N, I think the kit comes with an ND8, a four and a two. So uh, yeah, so that's them. They all come in their individual pouches. So that's me coking set. I mean, I could have spent a lot more money and gone with Lee filters, but for now, just starting all the landscapes, I just thought I'd go with coking, which are also a, a really good make. So, so that's that. Right, what else have we got? I've just mentioned the the Tekina 11 to 16, which is going to go on the 7D behind the goal. Uh, now, it's a replacement for this. <laughs> you can see that. Oh dear. And this is obviously Canon. I don't. This is the first time I've bought non-Canon, but. The difference in quality, this is quite heavy, it's obviously good glass and it feels really substantial. This basically just tipped over, I knocked it over when I was at Bournemouth last, just went to get something out of my rucksack and I had my remote set up, my remote body, my 7D set up next to me, ready to go round to the goal, knocked it over and obviously it took a, it took a fair brunt of force to break that but I thought, do I get another one again, or shall I go with something different? So, this was the same price. I think this was three three nineteen. It's a Tekina eleven to sixteen, and that'll go behind the the goal from now on. And uh, obviously, if I need a wide angle as well, out in the field doing landscapes, I've got that as well. So yeah, that the Tekina has replaced the ten to twenty. So that's another new purchase. Oh, before I forget, I'm sure you guys know, but I'm filming now on the M50, which is a 24 megapixel mirrorless. It comes with a 15 to 45 lens. And as I'm hoping you've noticed, the quality of the videos is so much better with this M50. The focusing is great. I mean, if I move around, it, I, can, I can watch it tracking me now. It's a really good, I mean, the, the autofocus system on the M50 is second to none, it's phenomenal. Um, I've got my Rode Mic Pro on the top there, still a bit echo in here. But um, yeah, so the combination of the M50 with the 15 mil, that's at 15 mil at the minute and the road mic, great for vlogging. I've still not tried it. Some guys have asked me, I know some of you have asked me if I've tried it for stills and I haven't tried it yet, but I must take it out and try it for stills. With 24 megapixel mirrorless, it should be pretty good, I would have thought, but mainly gonna be used for the vlogging, obviously. Right, so that's that, the M50. Now then, to go along with the the Mark IV, I've got a pig iron. Now I'm sure most of you have, have seen these. Obviously it's mainly, not gonna be used for sport, but obviously it's mainly for landscapes. Now what this allows you to do, bolt that on the bottom of the Mark IV, and then instead of having to adjust the ball top, the ball head, to put your 
camera into portrait position, you can leave it set up. So you might have balanced that and got it all all nice and level on the spirit bubble, and you just want to go portrait instead. So that allows you to quickly unclick it out of the top and click it back in. That was about twenty pound off off the internet, and uh, called a pig iron. I'll put the link in the description below, and uh, yeah, that's going to go on the Mark IV, and just allows you to quickly unclip it and put it into portrait. So that's a, hopefully going to be a good buy. I'm going to get all that sorted out later on. What else did we get? <laughs> Interval intervalometer. Obviously, again, I wanted that mainly for doing the uh, astrophotography, um, may, mainly just to lock the shutter. But there's quite a lot that this little thing can do. It, it, you can set. Yeah, I could put the body out in the garden or whatever, you know, in, in the back garden if I wanted to do some star trails, and I can set it for a certain time, and it will start. It'll start taking shots at like two in the morning or something, you know. So, but that's just going. Uh, that's just mainly going to be for my uh, shutter release. So yeah, managed to get that. Better than a cable tie and an eight mil nut that I was using. <laughs> I'm sure some of you guys saw that. Also for the astrophotography, a lens warmer. Now I did I did uh, Knowlton Church a couple of months ago now, and I did that over two hours. So every 25 seconds there was you know a shutter release, an exposure every 25 seconds over two hours. All going great. Got to the end of the two hours, my lens had. Uh, fogged up with dew, didn't realise. Luckily, it only dewed up in the last sort of 20 or 30 frames. Um, and so looked into it, and uh, again, probably a bit late to the party, but ended up getting a lens warmer. So just wrap that round the front of the lens, plug it into any uh, battery block, and that just warms up nicely and keeps the lens warm and saves any dew forming on the lens. So that if you're doing long exposures, you know, over like two or three hours, if you're doing star trails, and that was, I think that was 30 quid. I'll put the link in the description again. But uh, yeah, and that is basically it. So that's the update on the kit. Uh, I don't think I've got anything else. Um, no, can't think of anything. I've got another ball head. Uh, another ball head that's gone on my my uh, tripod. This is an Andor. I couldn't find a, a separate Niwa, so I've got this Andor ball head. That goes on the, my old tripod that now has the M50 on for filming, which has replaced, if I can find it, it's replaced that plumbersome old thing that I usually use for cricket. So I was using that, but a ball head now will be loads better. Well, obviously I've got the Niwa ball head on the Niwa tripod, but that's going to replace that. I'll still use that for cricket, because that's ideal for heavy duty 400s really, so that's going to replace that. But uh, yeah, so that is about the lot. So I just thought I'd do a quick quick update on what I've got. Say so I can't wait to get this out and use it in anger. Hopefully, might try and get out tomorrow if I can. So yeah, that's going to be uh, that's going to be great having that, and it's obviously a second body. Incidentally, my one of my one DXs has gone down. I went to put a battery in it the other day. The the, the body that I've been using for a couple of months won't even turn on. So I, I don't know what's happened to it. Um, I did have some sensor issues. I did uh, a sunrise, just put that down. I did a sunrise a couple of months ago now. I did a video on it um, at our local lighthouse. And once the sun had risen, I noticed really minute lines all the way across the frame. So whether or not the sensor's on its way out or not, I think it's done about 260 actuations. So whether or not the sensor's gone, because I have heard from a uh, good, good friend James Marsh, uh, also a sport photographer colleague, I do a bit of landscapes with him as well, he said when his sensor went on his 1DX, it totally packed up. So I'm not sure if any of you guys have had the same problem with sensors, and when your sensor goes, it won't allow you to turn it on. I'm not sure, but I'm going to send that body into fixation. But luckily, if I do get a call up to uh, go back on the sport, I've got the 5D Mark IV now as a backup. So... Uh, Say so it's seven frames per second, but um, not quite as fast. But it would be fine on a 400 if needed or anything like that. So uh, yeah, and it's uh, it's also 4K as well, 4K video. If ever I need to do any videoing on it, so I might give that a go as well. But uh, yeah, so that's the lot, guys. Bit of an update on my kit list. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, as normal, comment below. It's always great to hear from you guys. And um, I say I should be out tomorrow or what's, what's today? Tuesday. I should be out tomorrow or Thursday back in the woods I think or a bit of landscapes just to keep my eye in hope you're enjoying the landscapes and woodlands I really am 
I've always liked my trees, bit of a tree hugger, <laughs> but uh, I've never pointed a camera at it before seriously. So it's been really nice getting out into the woodland. It is totally the opposite end of the scale to sport, obviously. You know, I was walking around for a couple of hours the other day just to try and find a nice composition, listening to the birds. I mean, listening to that wren and seeing it singing as well in, in the beech tree was absolutely brilliant. It's beautiful, but uh, yeah, that was really nice. So I'm enjoying my woodlands at the minute. Not sure on the sport, obviously. Um, I know Premier League starting again tomorrow night. Not had a call up, but I wasn't really expecting to. There's only four games a day, so there's 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 plenty of us out there. But it'll come back when it comes back. The sport, and uh, meanwhile, I'll just keep doing landscapes and keeping my eye on on the woodland photography. So anyway, I'm rambling on as per usual. Hope you enjoyed that uh, kit update. Comment below. It's always good to hear from you guys. Thumbs up would be appreciated. Subscribe if you haven't yet, that would be much appreciated too, and uh, I'll catch up in a few days. Thanks guys, take care, catch up soon.